Okay, time now for top picks with our guest Cole Ketcher. Top pick on this day, or the first top pick on this day, Dell Technologies, D-E-L, on the New York Stock Exchange. This is a, an interesting one. Uh, Cole, best known for its personal computers. Many of us buy our personal computers from Dell, but getting a lot of attention for its AI servers these days. Yeah, so in the intro, we kind of talked about like stocks that, you know, have maybe uh, come down significantly after guidance just wasn't where it needed to be or earnings. And so Dell is one of those names where <clears throat> I think it was in the mid 180s. And now as of today, it's kind of right around 130. So obviously a pretty big move. And, um, you know, you can argue whether the move up should have been as high as it was, but that seems to be the market we're in where the highs are higher and the lows come down maybe more than they should. And right now it's kind of sitting right along its 50 day moving average, which uh, traditionally uh, when you're looking at an entry point for a stock, uh, if you think it's gonna go up, that's a great entry point. So uh, for me, I think that uh, they're gonna continue to see demand in that AI server category. Hopefully they'll see some uh, better margins come out of it as demand increases, which I think they will. And uh, I would use this blip um, in the stock and this move down to, to add to it. Um, you get a lot of uh, exposure to this AI market, but you get a little bit of diversity back to their more traditional models. So it's a little bit less risk than something like SMCI or some of those other companies. Okay, uh, here comes a China ETF as uh, top pick number two. It's the Crane Shares CSI China Internet ETF, ticker symbol KWEB on the New York Stock Exchange ARCA Index. Interesting pick, Cole, why so? Well, yeah, we actually had a caller uh, call in and ask about it and we kind of put it off to wait for now. So. Um, Typically not like a huge fan of investing in China, just with the regulations, it kind of seems like the wild west and, you know, things can swing uh, pretty heavily uh, depending on, you know, political climate and different things that they're doing there that maybe you wouldn't see in um, some other markets. With that being said, though, um, I think they're firmly in the category of they're trying to inflate their market. They're trying to get growth going again, uh, interest rate cuts, different things like that that are um, trying to push um, you know, the underlying economic growth. And generally, uh, some of these companies that are going to be in this index are going to be major benefactors of that. And so China uh, internet and technology companies have underperformed for a long time. And it just seems like there's some opportunity there where um, I think you could see um, uh, a move up and specifically part of the reflation trade. And I think that, you know, some of these companies, as long as the government doesn't uh, get too involved, I think these companies are primed to break out. So uh, I guess proof will be in the pudding here. Okay, and number three on these uh, on this day, Vertiv Holdings, ticker symbol V-R-E-T in New York. Cole. Yeah, so uh, again, more along the AI theme, kind of playing off chips, which I've had as top picks in the past. Uh, Vertiv is more along the data center and infrastructure uh, area where about 70% of their business comes from uh, the data centers kind of across the globe. So um, as this AI and supercomputing continues to get built out, uh, we're going to see much more need for the infrastructure and more data centers. and. Vertiv has been uh, aligned in that space and has been one of the top names. And now um, I think they're in the sweet spot where they've always had a good business and now uh, they've had a good business in an area that is in high demand. So I think that their profits and their revenues are gonna continue to expand. And I believe that uh, the stock price will go up even though it's had a nice little move already over the last year or so. Okay, time now for topics with Zach Curry. And you mentioned you like oil, a lot of names on sale, and your top idea in energy right now is Suncor. Yeah, again, um, you know, oil sand company, which we like because you're not having to go out, the company isn't having to go out and explore and, and find new assets, long life assets. You have a new management team <clears throat> that seems to have turned the corner. Um, like CNQ, they have just hit their, I would call intermediate debt target. So they're returning 75% of the free cash flow to um, shareholders. Good dividend yield, they're using buybacks temporarily. Um, our anticipation is that by the end of 2025, they'll hit their 100% mm -hmm. return um, threshold. 
Um, again, oil prices are, have come down. Um, this is on sale and it's a very long life uh, asset company. So really positive there. They've also announced um, they're trying to reduce their costs by about $10, $10 a barrel over the next three mm -hmm. years. Taking, it would take it to about $40, a little over $40 a barrel. And imagine, you know, you're selling it at 75, your costs are 45. Like that's a very nice margin. So again, uh, really positive on Suncor. Qualcomm, um, well, they were out with some news uh, this week that power bricks, they're going to be yeah. the thing of the past. This stock has done very well, close to record highs. Yeah, and again, it's taken a long time to yeah. get there. Um, we look at this as like a comparable to NVIDIA. So um, the growth is a little bit less, the valuation is a little bit less. Um, their deal with Microsoft, um, putting Snapdragon chips in the uh, Surface PCs, we think will be great. Apple recently announced another one-year extension to their to their um, deal with Qualcomm because Apple can't Make do their, their own, own chips. Yeah. Um, very positive on this name. Um, a little less, um, I would say, temperamental than Nvidia, <laughs> but again, um, our view a little less downside if that happens as well. So positive on the name. Um, certainly and in the right times space. Twenty times earnings for you know. It's, and it's growing at 15%, uh, again, le much less volatility, and again, um, valuation is a lot more appealing to us. Royal Bank is your third, and when earnings season came through, I remember one analyst mm -hmm. called Royal's earnings best in show. That's exactly what they were, and they, they've tended to be that way for the past year or so, certainly compared to other banks. Um, I would say firing on all cylinders, capital markets really um, grew. The one thing that we do love about this is the acquisition of HSBC. And if you're hearing a trend in our analysis of the banks, it has to do with acquisitions. So again, this is really the, the best way that banks can grow. Um, and Royal will, will benefit in our view from the HSBC acquisition. It's in Canada, it's in a, a you know, country they know. Um, but again, all other businesses with, with RBC are firing on all cylinders. Because um, they had some issues with City National. They like did. during, the, you know, kind of post SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, they dealt with some meaningful um, issues, let's call yeah, it. Yeah, and, and more so on the, on the balance sheet, more from a capital point of view, mm -hmm. where they, City National had some in, intermediate bonds that were underwater a bit. But again, um, they've, they've reverted, you know, Canadian acquisition, ca capital markets globally, um, really firing on all cylinders, capital levels at the bank are, are, are well. So again, um, we'll participate, we think, yeah. if interest rates in Canada start to come down a little bit. That was bit. gonna be my next question. Generally, do the banks pop on a rate cut? I wouldn't say they would pop, but it's better than rates going up. The housing market would presumably, with a rate cut, um, grow more room for mortgages, positive for, for Canadian banks, and again, royal, royal leading. And we don't often get a, a chance to talk about Canadian banks um, you know, being, being positive, so here, <laughs> here it is. All right, we are back with Jason Donville. We have been talking about Canadian growth stocks. We've been talking uh, with our viewers, questions, emails, but now it's time for your best ideas yep. going forward. Top pick time. Uh, Vertical Scope is your first one. What's the play here? Okay, so this is an interesting company, and the story I'm going to tell you about Vertical Scope may be something that a lot of people haven't heard, but it's an interesting one when you understand what's going on with AI and with chat and all that stuff. So Vertical Scope manages online communities. So if you're into phishing or you're into bowling or whatever, they manage those websites and those communities and they get e-commerce and et cetera, et cetera. But most of those fan sites or uh, communities have a, a chat area where people go in and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm looking for a fishing rod for a 10 year old or, mm -hmm. or what are the best lures if you wanna go fly fishing in the Bow River, that kind of stuff, right? And then along comes ChatGPT, right? Where it's uh, with these search engines that are not, they're looking for curated information. Oh. They want that gold. So, ver so Vertical Scope is the Reddit of Canada. If you're watching Reddit, Reddit's going through the roof. People, though, investors don't know, Vertical Scope is the Reddit. It's one eighth the size of Reddit in terms of all this data, right? So what's happening in Reddit is all these tech companies are all signing deals with Reddit to have access to those, th those curated rooms where people who know everything there is about bowling, right? And yeah. which may not mean, mean a lot to you and I, right? Yeah. Um, but it's really, really valuable stuff. Which means something right? to bowling ball makers. So, so, so Vertical Scope, which trades on about five and a half times yeah. earnings, by the way, it potentially is sitting on a gold mine. And uh, when you go down the states, Reddit is signing all these deals. The Vertical Scope is having the, having the preliminary discussions, but they sort of woke up one day and suddenly went, Everybody was ignoring us for a long time. Suddenly, everybody wants to be my, be my friend. So this is what's happening with Vertical Scope, and but, it's really cheap. So okay. and it's trading around nine bucks. And I look at this thing and go, 
like just on a normal multiple, just put on 12 or 13 times multiple, you get a $25 stock and it's trading at nine right now. It was a $25 stock during right. the time when everything was going bananas in 2021. It, it's come down significantly from there. So you think just that data piece, alignment with ChatGPT, that can take them there? Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. What about the fact that they do just compete with Reddit, right? Uh, the user base. Right. Well, um, once you have your community, right? You have mm -hmm. your you have your community. But the other thing is, Reddit's also got a different style, right? Reddit is pretty garbagey, yeah. right? I'm sorry. I hope I'm not going to hit with lawsuits yeah, or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. But I I I I, 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 I want to roaring kitty. No, but I go onto Reddit and I can't even navigate it. It's confusing and it's just full of all kinds of cons like it's the it's the worst of the worst, right? Okay. That you go into some, some stuff that vertical scope. It's not. It's mm -hmm. it's it's more. I'm saying this in a complimentary. It's very nerdish. Right, people want, who can talk about what kind of lures they like to fish with till the cows come home. Yeah. Like that's like, that's great that they found their joy or whatever, yeah. but it's not the same kind of really ugly stuff that's like you sometimes see on some of the other places. Regardless, there's a value in both of those sites, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's not a redundancy, right? So um, I, I think that I think that the vertical scope is in a is in a great position, and it really is this because when I was talking with Jesse, my partner, he talked about this like large language machines looking for stuff, right? And so if I pose a question to Chat, like what's the best mm -hmm. what's the best fishing rod for um, a ten year old just starting out, they have to go somewhere to find that information, and then they come back and say, according to authorities or according to experts, th these are the, right? Or, or or there's no consensus. They might say, according to the experts, there's really no consensus, yeah. but here are your options kind of stuff. That source material ultimately comes from somewhere, and, that, and that's why that's why I think uh, I think Vertical Scope has got a big, big bright future. Fascinating world. Yeah. Uh, Propel Holdings, th is this the financial company yeah, that you Yeah, this is the financial one that I was talking about. So you get a dividend and growth. Right, so this is might, might be the most, like, there's probably more PhDs working for Propel than <laughs> as, as, a, as a proportion of their staff and any other company, right? And it's it, it it's it had that AI thing right from the beginning. Um, they've been, you know, the pre it's consistently profitable, raising their dividend. And one of the things, if you want to understand how credit scoring, because you know, a long time ago, I used to be a financial services yeah, analyst before yeah. I became a hedge fund manager, right? So I, I for years, I've covered all the the the, the, the payday lenders. So when you deal with a credit score, you got the credit score, and it says your credit score is seven ninety. With an AI company, you've left your footprint all over the internet. They're going to look at 3,000 things about you to get a, a more enhanced score that's a better predictor of whether you're a good person to loan to. That's basically this is what, what Propel uses. That's what Propel does. And they use AI. So they're, um, so this is a very pure AI business. They don't have bricks and mortars. You can't go into, you can't borrow money from them by walking through a door and, and, and meeting with somebody across the counter. So then does it look like maybe they have riskier credit quality on that simple metric, but they actually don't? That's, I mean, we, we don't have a million years of history, right? But um, in, in the time, you know, we get the credit the credit data. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of the stuff that they do is, is white label through, uh, through credit <laughs> unions. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they are working, they have an institutional bank uh, backup, right? But so far, and it, you know, you always have to wait for you, when you, as you go through a credit cycle, to see if their their stuff is flawed because some some of these online lenders have gotten really beaten up but for these guys so far so good the credit quality seems to be really really strong do you know like what rates generally they're charging people like and, and their cost of capital I don't but it's it, it, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's through the credit union system uh, so I you know without getting into too much of the politics and uh, of uh, you know what is an appropriate level to lend at because yeah. I think that's where you're going going with this question. Um, they're, they're working with credit unions. Uh, credit unions aren't, aren't going to cooperate with uh, predatory lenders, right? So, Zedcor is your third top pick. Um, yeah. We've talked about this one before. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. It's a and, and uh, you know point out, uh, you know when I, when you come on the show they say don't have as your top picks companies that are too small. So this one's about 100 million, but it's it's got good liquidity, and I don't think it's going to be at 100 million for too long. Um, basically, it's security tech. It's 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 really sophisticated cameras and monitoring systems that you can put in parking lots. You know whether it's at Home Depot or Walmart or whatever, they, they keep track of it. I mean security cameras, and we're up a thousand percent. That feels like. <laughs> That's I mean, it. I know, but you're, there's no, there's nothing uh, else. Well, it, it's not, it's not growing by a thousand percent. No, it, I know. It, it's the phenomenon of a stock that is that nobody knows about that's orphaned that suddenly comes on a radar screen. So there's a big catch up. If, if, in a perfect world, that's that 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 chart should have just been really really smooth over five years. But there's a thing called discover the discovery process in finance, right? Where a stock that's not growing at a thousand percent suddenly goes up because no one's heard of it and then suddenly comes on radar screens. Going forward, though, I think that this company, you're still talking about a company that with really high margins, that's going to probably. Grow at 75% a year this year and next year, right? So, um, 
you know, the, 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 the big pop in the stock is just because it just nobody knew about it up until three or four months ago. Um, but I think you're still you're going to get a company here where this stock should be a three dollar stock in, in, in two years time. Um, we actually have a bit of uh, time left, so yep. I'm wondering if I can broaden out the conversation a little bit just to talk about this universe that you live in, yep. you know, smaller cap, yep. tech stocks, um, you know, they got run over when everything was being thrown yep. out. Yep. And what kind of recovery, what kind of discipline is being asked of the, st the companies today that was maybe different than, than 2021? Yeah, I, I don't think that's, the, that's what the issue is, where, okay. where we're now demanding these people clean up their act kind yeah. of stuff. It's not, it's not, that's not really what the issue is. You, what you get in a typical uh, um, small to mid cap cycle is a six or seven year run and then you get a, a year and a half kind of correction. And that correction usually, in, in our case, it, it results in just big multiple contractions. So stocks that we're trading at you know, 13, 14 times, which seems reasonable for a growth stock, suddenly find themselves trading at five times, right? And I can give you examples. You know, we talked about on, on the show Vital Hub, which is $7.15. Yeah. In, in October, it was, it was two sixty five, dollars right? Uh, Zedcore was, was $0.60 cents in October. It's now $1.20. None of these companies are growing that fast. It's the multiple expansion that's happening, right? And what you need is the psychology of the market to get to the point where um, they're ready to look at these stocks. So what does that happen when you get the correction so the things come down is the money comes out of small caps. So the money's now all away, right? Uh, usually interest rates are ri still rising, whatever. So one more reason to be away, right? And, you know, the, you, you, the, the, the perception of risk in the, in the environment yeah. is elevated. Once those peaks, so there's, a, there, there's no, nobody, everybody's out of small caps just about, the money can only really just come back in one direction. And same thing, once interest rates roll over, people sort of say, oh, I want more growth, I want more growth, right? So you, you start looking for stuff and then you say, where's the growth? And then the last thing is valuation. So if you look at a 30 or 40 year small cap cycle and you look at all the trough years, the trough year in, in 22 was, was the lowest of all those trough years. So the, so the setup coming in out of last October, so starting around October 20th, the setup for the next cycle it was the best we, we, you, you've had as far as your starting point goes. But even if you go back to 08, 09, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, and I that was when I got started. Like, like you know, as of, by, by, by the end of March of, of 09, I'm down 35%. I was up 110% from, from April to April. Right. And when it turns, and so same thing. So, since so we're at a turning point, you think? Or yeah, we've, some we're of the, it is I think planned. we're in the first year of the next six or seven years cycle because we're, we're still on the show talking about stocks on five times earnings. Yeah. And five years from now, I'll be talking on, on about stocks on 14 times earnings. And you go, okay, Jason, you know, now they're up at 14. Now, you remember that? That was like, you know, the, the last cycle was like, maybe you should be lightning up on small caps then. But I, I think now we're, we're early days because interest rates are just, go, just, just starting to turn. And we're still coming on the show. All three of the, of, the, of the top picks are under 10 times earnings. Does that mean we're going to start to see more companies come to market? Because that's been, especially in the Canadian market, where are the IPOs? Your, a company is more likely to go private than go public. I don't know if you're going to see a ton, a ton, ton of IPOs. Because I don't want to get too much into politics, right? But this is not a great place to be entrepreneurs get anymore, into politics. right? We can do it. Yeah. Oh, well, like, okay, but look, you know what's happened to GDP <laughs> per person over the last eight or nine years. We have, a, we have an affordability cr crisis. It's like having a, a thousand pound weight on your chest, right? Nobody can afford anything. Nobody's got any purchasing power. So the, ma the, the, the mismanagement, right? The, and and the, the fact that entrepreneurs, are in, in, in the eyes of so many people in the country, are not seen as heroes, but they're seen as, as, as you know, bad guys for whatever. It's like, you know, no, it's, it, it, this isn't going to work. There, there, are, there are selective, you know, slices of, of entrepreneurship, and that's what we're talking about here today. But the, the orientation uh, of, of the country right now towards uh, a, a strong economy that produces jobs but also has entrepreneurs that are seen as a, a positive part of that mm -hmm. we're, we're not there right now and until we get there I, I think we're gonna have just like slivers of, 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 of entrepreneurship and great companies but the TSX 60 it's not growing that's a little secret the TS 60 in aggregate it's not growing and there's no incentivized to growth. there's no encouragement to growth um, so you got to just pick the little the little pieces where there's growth, and then perhaps look at look at the states or elsewhere. But make a meal of the crumbs, I guess. Well, there, I mean, we, we we can still come on here and t find 25 companies to talk mm -hmm. about. So there's still a, it's, it's not. I don't want to make it sound like at the end of the end of the world, right? But our orientation's got to change uh, t towards entrepreneurship and not and recognize that that we balance our, our our social programs with strong economies that can create jobs and create tax wealth to pay for those. The idea that we we could ignore the 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 the, the, the part of the economy that is producing that 
that, 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 that revenue and prosperity that will pay for our hospitals and, and pay for our roads, is, it doesn't make sense. We, we, we've we've kind of lost, we've lost track of that. We need to have that balance restored. Okay, time now for top picks. Let's get right into it. Amazon is your first one. There's so much to like here. What do you think propels the stock higher? Again, it's a behemoth in the space, not a lot of serious competition or meaningful competition. They're going to report around $640 US billion in projected 2024 revenue this year. They're dominant in e-commerce, they're dominant in the cloud space, they're number one in the cloud space. They're dominant in the dig digital streaming space and also they're becoming dominant in the artificial intelligence space. They've got well over 200 million Prime subscribers. It's actually kind of hard to figure out exactly how many they have today. I'm pretty sure they have much more than 200 million at this point because that number is a little bit old. They've got 32% of the market share for, for the cloud business through their AWS uh, a segment, uh, their, their advertising business, those little ads at the sponsored ads on, on, on their Amazon site. Very high margin business. That's scaling very quickly. Um, balance sheet. Obviously, very strong, very, very strong cash flow. That's going to give you flexibility for growth, um, buybacks, and maybe yeah. a dividend at one, at one time or another down the road. And they really are incorporating AI strategy, spanning its hardware, software, and, and their cloud segments to improve their business, improve the customer experience. Technically, you know, clear up trend mm -hmm. channel of higher highs, higher lows. Can't get better chart than that. Um, they haven't broke through their, their all-time highs, and once they break through, like a lot of other tech companies, and you know, a lot more to go from there. They've been outpacing the broader S&P 500 index since the beginning of last year, 2023, and we're looking at 30% earnings growth rate going forward. So I think it's a great company. We continue to like it. Yeah. Uh, we continue to add to it in, in, in the right circumstances. We have two minutes left, so we're going to get through the next two. Constellation Brands, I think, is, is a really fascinating pick because it's a real sleepy stock. Yeah, so when you build a portfolio, you don't want everything in tech and Amazon and so forth. And that's why with a lot of my picks, I'll add a name that is, you know, like a Costco or Constellation mm -hmm. Brands, like a QSR or so forth. So they're a leading wine, beer, and spirits company over $10 billion in, in estimated uh, revenue for 2025 fiscal. Um, they're, it's a safe choice. They're a safe choice. I mean, you're looking at favorable consumer mm -hmm. trends. A lot of the beer category, Modelo, Corona, beer is doing extremely well. Uh, consumers are, are going in that premiumization trend like luxury products. They're buying more expensive alcoholic beverages, and they're set up for that. So strong cash flow. They're going to continue, continue to do buybacks. They did a $2 billion buyback in November. They raised their dividend a couple months ago by 13%. Stock's down 10% from its uh, recent high, so it's a little bit of an opportunity. We see 11% growth rate. Mm. Not terrible, but it's 11% growth rate going forward and a 1.6% dividend. We got to go MasterCard, yeah, 30 seconds. Let's do it. What do you like? Yeah, so look, favor favorable secular trends when you look at a payment country uh, company, you're shifting from cash to, to electronic, growth of e-commerce, increasing adoption of mobile payments, consumer spending and global trade continues to grow. Um, they, they they issued a $11 billion share buyback, so down about 10%, so there's an opportunity here as well. Welcome back. It's time now for top picks from Barry Schwartz. The first top pick, MSCI, ticker symbol MSCI on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Is this uh, MSCI, is uh, Morgan Stanley the dividend, uh, or the, the uh, index maker? Correct. It's an index yeah. business. I'll yeah. talk about it. Uh, this is one just... Before I get into the business, this is one where me, David Baskin, and Ernest Wong have been following for about five or six years. It's arguably a top 10 great business in the world. Just the valuation was too expensive. But look at the dip happened in, mm -hmm. in May, April, May. They missed earnings expectations. It finally got to a valuation where it's attractive. The bulk of their business, Paul, is uh, indexes. And uh, if you're an allocator, uh, you're the teacher's pension plan, and you want to invest in emerging markets, you're not going to allocate your capital to a new manager unless that manager uses a benchmark, an right. emerging market benchmark, which is owned by MSCI, and that manager has to pay a licensing fee to the MSCI every year. The price goes up every year. Paul, they have 290,000 indices that they sell, right? So you people know with 
ETFs where you have one with uh, currency hedged or stripped with dividends or including dividends, all these different permutations. And each one of these must compare against a benchmark. And so MSCI is a play on uh, global growth and uh, all margin business generates a lot of free cash flow, and one run by the guy who uh, split it off from Morgan Stanley, Henry Fernandez. He's a billionaire. He just bought more shares of the stock on the dip, and so it's one where we feel the top line and bottom line will grow at double-digit rates for a very long period of time. Okay. Number two on this day, Coast, Coastar Group. Yeah. Excuse me, ticker symbol CSGP on the NASDAQ. Uh, not, this is another company where it sells data. Coastar sells real estate data to, uh, to anybody that needs it, brokers, institutions. All, it covers tons of transactions and has a proprietary database that you pay a subscription. And then the exciting part is it owns a number of these platforms, apartments.com, homes.com, where people put their, and agents put the listings of their houses or apartments that are for, uh, for rent. And uh, this is a market leader. The uh, CEO is a real, what we call, outsider. He's sitting on a lot of cash. He's just made a smart acquisition that we think uh, to boost uh, real estate transactions. And uh, the stock has fallen a lot this year. I have no idea why, it j because it raised guidance. And we think starting next year is going to generate an ample lot of free cash flow. Okay, there's, uh, 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 there's a co-star. Number three on this day, Visa, a very familiar name and stock. V on the New York Stock Exchange, the payment processing giant. It's a stock that we've owned for about 10 years. I wish I was smart enough to have purchased this on the IPO in uh, 2008. Oh, my God. But uh, Visa is just chugging along here, Paul. Double-digit uh, top-line growth, double-digit bottom-line growth. The stock has not done as well as I would have expected over the last five years, even though the earnings have doubled over the last five years. Maybe the pandemic had something to do with it. Uh, but people are now traveling more. When you travel, you use your credit card. They make extra fees there on the foreign exchange. I know people hate it, but it's great for Visa and MasterCard. People are still doing more online shopping. I, I, when was the last time you used cash? A long time ago. You got <laughs> it. So that's the thesis for Visa. The valuation is really not that expensive for the quality of the business. So all three of these top picks, Paul, are high margin, uh, low capital intensity businesses run by great management teams that generate lots of free cash flow and eventually going to return all of it to shareholders. So we're very attracted to all of them.